the biggest games, the greatest players, and the largest payouts on the planet. The WPT is a series of international high-stakes poker tournaments that can turn amateur players into millionaires and make professionals into superstars. With millions of dollars on the line, it's time for these three players to live the dream of fame, fortune, and the one thing money can't buy, a WPT title. Tonight on the World Poker Tour. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the majestic Beau Rivage Resort and Casino. We are in Mississippi's Gulf Coast for the exciting conclusion of the Southern Poker Championship. I'm Mike Sexton, along with Vince Van Patten, and this is the WPT. And Mike, I tell you, it's been impressive. Non-stop action from the opening bell here at the Beau Rivage. And that action included the quick meltdown of local favorite Tyler Smith, alongside the elimination of two short stack players. But the big story sits with WPT champ Hoyt Corkins. This is the sixth WPT final table, and he is looking to join that elite group of players who have earned multiple WPT titles. Yes, but sitting in his way are two impressive opponents, the oil man from Oklahoma, Jonathan Cantor, and the young internet player from upstate New York, Jerry Van Strydunk. These players really want the cash and the title. We're very close to crowning the next WPT champion. All right, who's it gonna be? Only one way to find out. Let's go watch him gamble. And Hoyt has the chips. He's a chip leader, 2.9 million. Jonathan Cannon with 2.1. Jerry Van Strydon with 1.2. The Annie's are 4,000. Blinds 15 and 30. Let's go to the felt. Action on the Cowboy. Hoyt Corkins, who picks up a pretty impressive ace nine. Well, well, Hoyt certainly okay. far and away the most experienced of these players left in this tournament. Here he's got an ace nine. Oh, that hand is favored over the random two-card blind hand, so he's going to raise it here. Makes it 68,000 to go. To Mr. Oil from Tulsa, Jonathan Cantor. He's got a 9-8, and he folds. Now it's around to the 24-year-old. And let me add, this guy studied biological engineering at Cornell University. Pretty impressive stuff. He's going to make the call here with a Queen-7 offsuit, so he is gambling here with a chip leader. Just a little, let's see what happens. Now flop comes ace, king, seven. So the youngsters flop bottom pair, Hoyt has flopped top pair, and yet it's gone check, check. Hoyt did not bet his two aces there, and it may come back to bite him as the youngster has made two pair on the turn. Oh, Queens and sevens, and now has the lead. Jerry checks again. Trying to trap here. Well, Hoyt's now gonna bet, just in case his opponent just made two queens or has some kind of straight draw. Little does he know. He now has the worst hand. 120,000 into Jerry. He can just come right over the top of the guy, but maybe he's afraid Hoyt was slow playing on the flop by checking. Will he come back over the top, make him pay for it, get him out? No, he's just going to cool call. Well, he's just going to call with two pair. See what happens on the river here. I'm a little surprised he wouldn't raise there, but he didn't. Eight of spade comes off. Action on the youngster. Now look at this, Vince. He checked and called on the turn, and now all of a sudden he's going to lead out and bet on the river 275,000. Now Hoyt's trying to figure this out. What is going on here? Guy didn't raise me on the turn. All of a sudden he's going to bet on the river. Now Hoyt's not liking it, Vince, but this could very well be a curiosity call. Uh, very irritating if you're Hoyt right now. And if you look over his right shoulder, you'll see Hoyt's Broke cowboy cousin in the background. <laughs> oh boy. Well, 275,000. Hoyt's going to make the call. He's not going to like it. I just, I, I just went crazy. Well, Hoyt said he went crazy. Not happy with the way he played that pot. And there's the Jerry Birds right there. Yeah, Hoyt didn't bet this hand on the flop when he hit the two aces, and then he paid off the 275,000 on the river. So he's not at all happy with the way he played that hand. Good start here by Jerry. Taken down, at least in that hand, the great Hoyt Corkins. Well, action back on Hoyt. Again, he picks up ace high. This time an ace five. Don't anger this cowboy. He certainly bungled the ace nine a minute ago. Let's see what he's going to do here with the ace five. Lines 15 and 30. We're playing fast here in Biloxi, and he's going to raise it 72,000 to go. 72. 
Well, the action on the Oklahoma businessman who says, if there's one thing I want you to know about me, it's that I'm not related to Rodney Dangerfield. Does look a little like him, doesn't he? <laughs> Something like that, and he folds. So back to the youngster again. This time he's got the 98 holes. He's going to make the call. Why not? Just beat Hoyt a minute ago. Maybe he can do it again. Here he flops the open end straight draw as it comes King 6 7. He's going to check. Hoyt again going to make the continuation bet. Mm -hmm. 80 grand. I want to look at this. The youngster's getting out raisin chips, Vince. Going to come right over the top with the open end straight draw. Say, ain't so, Mike, but it is. And I like this bet by the youngster here. I like it because he's got a hand you could gamble with if you wanted to, but you're just trying to win it right here with a nine high by coming over the top and raising. He's putting the old lasso right around the cowboy's neck right now. Well, but Hoyt is thinking now. And if I move in on this kid, how would he like that? Hoyt expert at moving all in to take down pots. But does he want to do it here? And he bungled up the last pot. Not happy with the way he played this one. Just going to sit back and give another pot to the youngster. These WPT tables are hard to make. There's a lot of great players don't even have any, like Johnny Chan or Hug C. So it's nothing to be took lightly, you know. I've, been fortunate here on the WPT. Three players remain at Biloxi. We're coming back with more on the World Poker Tour. To make this final table, I never thought this would happen. It's always one of those things that you just dream about. Mr. Jerry Van Strydon. It's kind of surreal that it's happening so suddenly. We're back here on the World Poker Tour at the Beau Rivage. And Jerry Van Strydon is doing quite well as three players remain. He says, I never dreamed this would happen, but yet he's played five events, made the money three times. So it certainly looks to me like it could happen for this kid. And right now, Mike, he's the new chip leader with about 2.2, Hoyt with about 2.1, and the oil man, Jonathan Cannon, with about 2 million. Well, they've all got over 2 million in chips. You talk about a race to the finish. We are going to see it right here. Anybody's game. All right. Play goes to Jonathan Cantor. Tulsa man, the businessman, and he is going to raise with just a 9-6 of hearts. Makes it 69,000. Jerry's coming right over the top here with an ace-5. Makes it 2.30 to go, but look at this. Cowboy Hoyt picks up the eights. Well, the pot's been raised and re-raised. He doesn't know if the oil man's got a real hand and could come over the top yet again. So, tough decision here with the mid-pair for the Alabama Cowboy. Just gonna get away from the hand. Oh, cool. And look at this, Jonathan's gonna gamble here with the nine six of hearts. Made the call. Man, that's a $160,000 call. Just wants to see a flop with the nine six of hearts. But what a flop for the youngster. Jerry has flopped top and bottom pair. He has got aces up. So what a re-raise he made right there with an ace five offsuit. And he's gonna bet 285,000. Vince, the oil man better be careful here because if he makes a move now, he'll be hitting an oil slick or a dry oil well, one or the other. It would not be prudent on his part to try to make a move here because Jerry is not going anywhere with aces up. Jonathan said he's not in this tournament for the money. He's got enough money, he says. I'm here for the thrill of victory. Uh, he's made the lay down. Show me one time. Well, Vince, we've heard that story before from other guys at the final table, but in this case, he told his wife to get on the private jet and come out and join him here this morning to watch him play at this final table. So I think he's telling the truth. I think the guy's got some dough. <laughs> All right. Jerry, very nice there. She was asked to show his hand. He showed it to Jonathan. True gentleman at the table. Here we go. It's on Jerry again. He's got a 4-7 of diamonds this time. Yeah, he's going to raise with it. Makes it 60,000 to go, but that's not going to play with Hoyt here as he picks up an ace-queen. He comes right over the top of the youngster. Yeah, makes it 240,000. 
But Jonathan Cannon with a pretty decent king ten of hearts. Well, Vince, he just called a re-raise a minute ago with the nine six of hearts. Cool. And he's going to call 240,000 cold here with a king ten. Yeah, Jerry quickly folded his hand, disgusted. So here we go. Oh, and it comes king right on the flop. So the oil man striking oil on this flop as he hits top pair. Point reaching for chips to make a continuation bet. Oh, uh, yep. Looks like 300,000. Well, the pot has over 550,000 in it, so Hoyt betting 300,000 here in hopes his man goes away. And that is a good poker face right there as his wife Linda watches on. Question to your raise, just call. He just calls. A little puzzled why if you call a raise before the flop of that hand and hit that flop, you don't raise here, but now a six comes off. Well, here, Hoyt wisely putting on the brakes and checking. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. and Jonathan going all in with the top pair. Hoyt is profiling here for some reason, just wants his opponent to think he's got something, I guess. How much you got there? Oh, boy. No chance he's going to call this with just ace high events. Cowboy's just standing up in his stirrups, trying to look pretty. This is just a tactical move to try to indicate to his opponents that he has a hand. And when you bet me, you know, be careful because you might get played with when, in fact, he can't beat anything but a stone bluff here. And why would the guy call on the stone bluff on the flop? So Justin wants to see Mr. Oil sweat a little bit. He finally folds. Yep, there you go. Jonathan Cantor taking down that pot, and with it, the chip lead. And so far, he's starting to pick on Hoyt Corkins. We're coming back as three players remain here on the World Poker Tour. Tonight's World Poker Tour brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. The Bar Rivage is the jewel of the South. People that come here for the first time, they walk through the front doors and they say, wow. I'm telling you, it is the nicest casino by far. How important are poker players to the Beau Rivage? How important is the WPT event uh, to the poker world? It's always a thrill to compete on the WPT because you're competing against the greatest players in the world. The WPT is the NBA. I'm telling you, it's the real stuff, and the weak players don't make it in the WPT. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the beautiful Beau Rivage on the Gulf. And what a fantastic property here. The Annie's are going up to 5,000, blinds 20 and 40,000. And right now you can see our chip leader, Jonathan Cannon, the oil man with 2.7. Jerry Van Strydunk with 2.3. And look who's gone way down, Hoyt Corkins, down to about 1.3 million. He came to this final table as the big chip leader, and now he sits in third place with three players left. Well, the action has happened. Jerry with a quick fold. Hoyt with King Jack has raised. You can't blame him for raising with that hand in the small blind. No okay. problem. And Mr. Oil with ace four is gonna call the 105. King Jack up against ace four. We're flopping. Now flop comes nine, eight, seven. This gives Hoyt a gut shot straight draw. A 10 would give him a straight, but he's gonna make the continuation bet. Raise. 120,000, and look at this. Jonathan is raising with that dangerous flop, Vince, with absolutely nothing but an ace four here. That's pretty impressive stuff here. Well, he's gonna try to manhandle the cowboy here. Good instincts. 295. And look at this, putting the pressure on the cowboy. Well, it is a lot of pressure too, Vince. Very difficult to call a raise here when you can only catch a 10 to probably win the pot. Jonathan's wife, Linda, sweating him on. I'll tell you, if I ever put a dollar out there in the pot, I'd lose it every single time. Right now, Hoyt getting a little befuddled. <laughs> Whatever money I put in the pot is lost. Now, if y'all fold to me, and the big blind give me a walk, I can win that one. Morning and 